That is a lot of red and a message you don't want to see. We've got an endless rendering loop. Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Today we're going to look at the React hook use callback. The key to understanding this hook and how you can avoid the common re-rendering loop mistake you saw at the beginning of this video. Let's get started by looking at the key to understanding use callback. And the key to understanding this concept is referential equality. So I'm going to use the console over here on the right from Chrome and then on the left, we've got Visual Studio Code, but I'm just going to drag the console over because it's going to be the main focus here at first. So I'm going to type in the number seven, which is a primitive value, and use strict equals to seven, and that's true. Likewise, if I type in a string, use strict equals, type in the same string, that's true. That's not true in JavaScript, though, when it comes to objects. So if I do the same with an empty object, we get false. It occupies a different space in memory. It looks the same, but it is not the same. It does not have referential equality. The same applies to arrays. They are both, of course, type of object in JavaScript. So we've got a couple of falses there, and we've confirmed that even though an object looks like the other object, it's not the same, and the same for arrays. Well, when it comes to functions, that is our main concern with use callback. Use callback returns a memoized function. It doesn't call the function, it actually returns the definition, so you can call that same function later. So what we're concerned with is the referential equality. I'm going to define a function here called ff as a factory function, and it's going to return a function that simply returns my name, Dave. From here, I can say Dave1 is equal to this factory function, and I can say Dave2 is equal to this factory function. So if I were to call either one of these, they would return my name, the string Dave. However, if I say Dave1 is strict equals to Dave2, that's false. And that's the key here, because we need to understand that when React re-renders a component, it recreates these functions. And even though they look the same, have the same name, even the same definition, both of these were created from the same factory function, they're not the same. They do not have referential equality. This is where use callback can help us. So now I'm going to drag this back over so we can see more Visual Studio Code again. And we're going to go to the React app, a simple app that I have running that has a simple input here. Let's look at this. I'm using some state for the user input, and I'm actually displaying that output as well on the page. So I could drag this down and you could see the display there. We don't really even need to dis to see the display of that output because it's the same as what I would type in here. But every time we update state, as we know with use state, it will re-render the component. And then we have a sum function here. And this sum function is grabbing num1 and num2 from state. I don't even have the set state parts of use state in here because we're not using those. We've just set these to four and five, so they won't change on us, but they are pieces of state, and sum is just adding them together. And then we've got use effect here. Use effect is relying on this sum function. It's in the dependency array. So anytime the sum function changes, use effect will run. And I've just got use effect logging new sum and the value of the sum function. So now that we've covered all of that, let me start typing in the input over here in our app. And I'll just type my name, four letters, Dave. And you can see four times in the console, it logged new sum. Well, sum, we didn't really change it, but it is a new sum function. Likewise, the value was always nine. Nothing really changed. So by re-rendering the component, by updating state in something that didn't even play a role in sum, we're creating a new sum and we're running this use effect that is looking for sum to change. And that's where we can really use some help from use callback to prevent that from happening because we don't want that to happen. Sum shouldn't be re created just because we typed in our uh, text input over here. And of course, it doesn't need to calculate a new value for us because it hasn't changed. Now let's add one more piece of state here. I'm going to put it between the numbers and the user input, and we'll just call this result. And so this will have result 
and set result. And I'll just set it to use state with an initial value of zero. There we go. Okay, so now we have our result and set result. I saved that. We got a warning because we're not using it yet. And we got a warning about sum as well. And we can look at that in just a second too. But what I want to do is after we call sum, I also want to set the result here. But I'm going to do it in a comment first, and then we can actually look at that warning because that's important to see as well. Okay, so I need to drag this up a little higher so we can read the warning better. And what we get is a warning that pretty much says what I just went over besides the set result and result warning here. So here we go, line 911, where we have sum. It says the sum function makes the dependencies of the use effect hook change on every render. And that's because it's being recreated. And it says move it inside the use effect callback. So you could define some inside of use effect before you call it, but then that doesn't make it as flexible. You couldn't use it really anywhere else if you just defined it in here. But it says alternatively, wrap the definition of some in its own use callback. And so that's what we will be doing. I'll clear this out for now so we can scroll this back down a little bit or pull it back down and I'll be able to type in the input again if we need to. We've still got our console here. But what I want to do inside this use effect now is set the result. And this is a beginner mistake and it can easily happen because we usually want to set the state inside of a function. We're looking for something to change. Then we're going to set that state. But let me show you the problem. I'm going to set it equal to whatever sum calculates. We're depending on sum. Now, this returns a primitive value and our number's never changing. It's always going to be nine when we call sum. We're not updating this state at all for num1 or num2. So we're going to get lucky here just because React is smart enough to say, hey, this is the same value and it's a primitive value. So I'm going to save and now notice we got new sum value nine, and it only happened twice. But really, if we think about this logic, it should be an endless loop. And that is because we updated the state. When we update the state, the component re-renders. When the component re-renders, it creates a new sum. When sum changes, it calls use effect. Use effect, we're updating the state inside of this use effect. That sounds like an endless loop. So why didn't we get one? Well, it's because use state is smart enough to say, okay, I'm getting the same primitive value, the number nine, and I've already got the number nine, so I don't need to continually update it. So it happens, it runs this use effect at load time, and then it updates the state and happens one more time. And after that, it goes, now nah, I've got the same value. I don't need to keep doing that. And it's really preventing us from a big mistake here, which would be an endless loop. So let's go ahead and fix this now, and we won't see these issues anymore, or at least this about the uh, use effect hook here. Let's see if we still have a warning about result, just because we're not using it anywhere in the app right now. But let's go ahead and pull in use callback up here at the top. And now we can wrap our function in use callback. So we'll put it right outside the function definition. And we'll put a parentheses at the end, but we also need a comma here because use callback has a dependency array just like use effect. And you can tell we're dependent on the state num1 and num2. So we need to put those in the use callback dependency array. And if I drag this just a little more, we can see it's not wrapping now. So there's our full use callback. Now we could put this on separate lines as well, just like we would with any other function, but this works right now. So we've got our function here as normal, but we've also got the dependency array and it's wrapped in use callback. What use callback does is memoize the function. So now it will have referential equality. So I'll save this and we'll come back to our application and we can see what warnings we're getting and I believe we're only going to be getting a warning for result and that is correct. And we only got new sum value nine once. Now here's the real test, I'll clear this out so we have more room and I'll type. Now let's see how often this new sum value gets logged to the console. It's not getting logged to the console at all because sum is not changing when we update the state 
we're re-rendering still because we're updating the user input state over here, but we're not creating a new sum function. It's memoized, and that is really when we want to use use callback if we have our function in a dependency array, and if that uh, hook, whatever hook has the, it doesn't just have to be use effect, but whatever hook has the dependency array will be looking for a change of that function, well, then we need to wrap it in use callback. Now we might also need to wrap a function in use callback if we were passing it down as a prop and the component we were passing it to is memoized because if we didn't wrap it in use callback and we kept sending a new function, it would break that memoization as well. That could be in a tutorial on react.memo. But the main reason you usually see use callback used is because a function is going into a dependency array like we see here. So with that said, let's look at what does create the endless loop that we saw at the beginning of this tutorial. Okay, I'm going to create another function and I'm just going to call this function build array. And this function is just going to take those two pieces of state again and make a new array with them, num1 and num2. And really that's all it's going to do. So we're building an array. So now I'm going to use this build array function in place of sum. And I should be able to select both. There we go. And replace both of those. And now we'll say new array. And we don't really need value here. We'll just say what the array is. Oops. Ah, I can't type. There we go. And so now we could just call build array right here as well. So I guess I could have replaced that, but I'll just type it out. Build array inside use effect. Now I'm going to type uh, comment out the set result again so we don't have an issue at first, but we can see what happens here. So save this much. You can see we've got new array four and five. But once again, I believe we're still going to have that warning that we had before. This is not wrapped in a use callback. So yes, we've got the same message about either put build array inside the use effect, and that means put the definition inside use effect, or alternatively wrap it in use callback, which is once again what we'll do. I'll clear this out though, and I'll just delete my name. We can see, once again, for every backspace I hit or for every letter I type, it logs to the console new array, and then of course, it's also outputting the array here. But we have a bigger issue, because remember an array is not a primitive data type. So React will not save us from ourselves. And this is where I see beginners have lots of problems with this, because once again, they set the state and they have a function in the dependency that is recreated on every render. Well, when this happens, this will create an endless rendering loop. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, and that may crash everything for me, but we'll see what happens now. So I'm going to save. And there we go. Endless rendering over here on the right, and I'll scroll this up. That is a lot of red and a message you don't want to see. We've got an endless rendering loop. Okay, I'm going to stop the app, open up the terminal and hit Control C. There we go. So the app is stopped and now I'm going to go ahead and close this React app and I'll have to restart it after we fix this issue. So close out of the terminal for now. I can clear this terminal window as well, but we'll launch a new one over here. So what we need to do is once again, apply use callback. So we have use callback, and we're going to wrap our build array function. And now inside, we once again need to provide that dependency array, which has num1 and num2 for use callback. I can drag this over just a little more so we can see it on one line for now. And so now we've applied use callback to the build array. And so now it should have referential equality and we should not see that endless loop issue when we set the build array result as the result here. So let's go ahead and save all of our changes now. I'll drag this back over so we can see the new app launch. Control back tick or the terminal menu will let you open a new terminal either way npm start for your react app 
and it should launch a new tab over here for us. And once we do that, we'll of course have to open up the uh, dev tools as well. Okay, we've got the app open. I will open the dev tools. Now in the console, we've got a warning for result and a warning for sum because we're not using sum now. But what we don't have is any endless loop or any problem there. And that's because we used callback to memoize our build array function. So once again, even when I type, we are no longer outputting new array to the console. So I hope these examples, and they are simple examples, but I hope they have given you a better understanding of why we use callback and especially the key, referential equality. And that will help you understand not only use callback, but other React optimizations as you learn about them. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.